Um, I even made some notes this time, which is, which is you know, anyone who saw me last time will, will know that I walked around a lot and didn't make a lot of notes. I'm, I actually made some notes this time. Um, so, first of all, thank you to Brian. Um, thanks for the Chelsea references. Thanks to everyone at uh, Computer Weekly for the invitation. Um, thanks for all the speakers. Well, I mean, th- this, this is such a lineup. Yeah, I, I feel suitably um, you know, embarrassed, frankly. Um, <laughs> Uh, but 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 you'll see why as we go through. I, I don't know if jo- if Paul Kobe's still in the room. No, he's gone. He's gone. Um, because um, a, l- a little bit of story about why why change matters and actually why, why some of some of what we do matters. Um, I, I became clinically clumsy on Cyber Monday and I broke my iPad. Um, and I happened to be in the West End going to an event which was really really dull. Don't bother going there again. If you want to know which event it was, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> But I had some time to kill, so I went to the Apple store uh, and I looked at the price of an, app, uh, Apple, uh, an, uh, an iPad Air, the old version, because I didn't want the new version, um, and it was expensive. And I went on to one of the Macs, and I don't use a Mac, and I logged on and I went to the John Lewis site and I found that there was a countdown going on on the John Lewis site where they had six iPads left. So this bizarre situation where I'm in the Apple store, I log on to John Lewis, I order my iPad at 50%, uh, 50 quid below the price I could have bought it in the uh, Apple store, and I picked it up this morning from Waitrose when I went to get my shopping. Um, I couldn't have thought of that 18 months ago, let alone a year ago or two years ago. So um, if, if that's changed and that's um, uh, the sort of... Uh, Dynamics that we have to lead in, then uh, wow, we've got some interesting, uh, interesting times ahead of us. Um, so this session is a little bit about leadership. Um, so before I start, I do need to tell you a little bit about who I am. My name's up there. I'm Ian Cohen. I'm the Group CIO of Jardine Lloyd Thompson. Jardine Lloyd Thompson, the largest uh, risk management, insurance broking, and benefits consulting organi- organisation that most of you in the room will never have heard of. Um, I guess we're called a stealth brand. I have no idea what that means. If you know Aon, Marsh, Willis, and those kind of companies, we're fourth. Um, but then we're a fraction of we're a fraction. Thank you. We're a fraction of their size. Um, in some markets, we're second, but most of the time, we're fourth. Um, we're 9,000 people worldwide. We operate in 39 uh, territories. Uh, and that allows us to offer uh, services in 135 countries around the world. I have no idea how many countries there are in the world. I'm told 135 is a lot. Um, so lots of discussions about change today. I thought um, I'll talk a little bit, uh, give you a little bit of background about, uh, about me if you've never seen me before. Um, I am uh, a CIO. Um, that, that does feel like I should sort of be an Alcoholics Anonymous or CIO Anonymous, but I'm not. I am a CIO. Um, I'm a professional CIO. Um, that kind of means I'm part magician, part UN keep, peacekeeper, full-time relationship counsellor, and last time I checked, a rather good used car salesman. Um, to add a little bit of colour, I was at Wembley last night. I am a musician, and I was a musician in a previous life. I still play a little bit. A slash was really good. My eldest daughter loved it. Um, and as Brian has told you, I am a massive Chelsea fan. Um, and I follow Chelsea since 1967. If you, if you do follow me on Twitter, and Daryl is in the audience, he's a big Spurs fan. I was telling him, someone told me that he blocked me on Twitter because I tweet too much about football. Um, it's 1967. I was little, but, but there you go. Um, I speak quite quickly. I apologise for that. There's nothing I can do about it. Please just keep up. Um, (laughs) So this session is called Demystifying Digital Leadership. Um, And that's probably a bit of a misnomer because probably other than cloud and big data, um, there hasn't been a more misused or overhyped term uh, more column inches written in business class magazines and in the pages of the IT press. Um, probably since the last time the consultants and the supply side salespeople got in front of your CEOs um, and started talking about new shiny stuff. Um, so digital is the new shiny shiny. Um, but the problem I have with this is, is I don't really know what they actually mean when they say digital. So I typed digital transformation into Google. I got 46 million results in less than 0.4 of a second. So I guess digital's quick. Um, According to McKinsey, digital is a pan-optical business perspective that touches every part of your enterprise. I have no idea what that means, and it's no help at all. So on the way here, 
I thought I would engage another source of consulting wisdom. Um, And I asked him what he thought digital was, and he said, well, it's kind of like doing your business on your phone or the internet, isn't it, mate? Um, And I kind of thought, probably... Well, actually, no, what he did then was he went on to rant about Uber, uh, about Uber drivers being the spawn of Satan, about the pedal-powered tuk-tuk drivers in the West End uh, being consigned to the deepest depths of Hades alongside accountants, estate agents and insurance brokers and didn't know I worked in insurance. But actually, compared to a pan-optical perspective on my enterprise, um, that's probably not bad. Um, I guess the problem is that digital means so many different things to different people. Um, And digital leadership, when we talk about digital leadership, is exactly the same. Interestingly, if you type digital leadership into Google, you get 107 million results, so you guys are obviously searching more. Um, But right up there, uh, about halfway down, there it is, um, I spotted a book, and it's called Digital Leadership Changing Paradigms for Changing Times. So quick show of hands, anyone bought that one? Anyone know who wrote it? No one? This is going to be a tough... This is going to... Yay! Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got to say, this is, this, is, this is going to be a tough room, but some people can read the slides. Um, in the Amazon summary, it says, leadership is no different than it was years ago. The only difference is that the style and the focus needs to change with the changing times. Um, I quite like that. Um, it doesn't come from a Gartner or Forrester uh, analyst. It doesn't come from a Harvard Business School professor. It did come from that guy called Eric Scheninger, um, who is the principal at the New Milford High School uh, in New Jersey. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about Eric later. Um, so when, when, I was, when I was here last time, we talked a little bit about leadership and management. And I just want to touch on that a little bit, um, because actually, and bizarrely, some of the things I said last year are surprisingly relevant this year. It's almost like there's a circle going on here. Um, We discussed management. There you go. There's a Chelsea slide. Um, And we talked about management being the ability to turn talent, the talent of individuals or groups, into performance. And the key words there were being talent and performance. Uh, And the point being that if you're a great manager, you're probably great because people work better for you than they work for other people. Um, If they don't, get out of management. Um, You're probably in the way. What the best managers do is they speed up that reaction uh, between talent and uh, uh, of individuals and teams, and they create the performance that creates an outcome. Now, that's very different to the primary purpose of a leader. And we talked a little bit about leadership, and the primary purpose of leadership being to sort of rally and galvanize people around uh, a vision of a better future. And that's all about um, bringing clarity to ambiguity, uh, leading through clarity, articulating a future state in simple, clear ways that can be understood and that everyone can get behind. So why is that relevant to a discussion on digital? Um, well, so over the last few years, and, and I'll give them a shameless plug because nobody's in, no one from, uh, from, from this organisation is in the room, uh, I don't think, um, I've been doing some work with, with um, the Leading Edge Forum. And the Leading Edge Forum has been looking at uh, some of the characteristics of digital leadership. Um, and uh, whilst the, the terms that we use for digital leadership are generating those 107 million uh, results on Google um, and are responsible for all the thousands of competing definitions that are there, um, what's become quite clear through the research... Um, is that for the vast majority of the firms out there, and I'd include mine in in that list, um, leadership and digital leadership is actually one and the same. Um, It's not like suddenly everyone in this room was an analogue leader last year when we were chatting about this stuff and suddenly became digital and you all ran back to your offices and you got that project catalogue out and you renamed it the analogue catalogue of 2014 and you pulled out the new one for this year's budget and you called it the digital catalogue of 2015 and you took it to your CFO and your CFO went, hurrah, it's digital, here's a load of money. Um, it's, It's... It's nothing to do with that. Actually, when you boil all of this stuff down, it's really just about change. And all of the speakers in the previous session were talking about change 
and how change is, is, is the fundamental building block and driving force behind all of innovation. Um, yeah, you know, sure, yeah, the pace is quicker. The engagements and the relationships are a little bit more different. Um, there's more data available um, to both inform and challenge the decisions that we make. The stakeholders come from different areas and we've got new partners. But ultimately, it's, it's all about change. You know, we didn't suddenly became, become Cyber Steve at the end of, you know, at, at, at the end of uh, 2012. Um, these are changes to our industries, changes to our business models, changes to our products and services, changes to the competitive landscape. Um, new entrants, old entrants with new guns, um, new ways of working, changed ways, ways of working, new talents, new skills, things that we need um, in, in, in the organisation. I suppose a wise philosopher you know, kind of hit it on the head when he said, we're all going through changes. That's not me, that is Ozzy Os Osborne. <laughs> he also went on to say that people were ins thought he was insane because he was frowning all the time, but that's, that's not relevant today. Um, the challenge is really, how do we respond in the, in, in, in the face of all this change? And one of the things that's been quite handy doing this research with the LEF is it kind of pointed to four key characteristics of an organisation that needs to be present um, for a successful response. This isn't what digital is, it's just how you might respond. And, and firstly, what, what, what the research does is it talks about the age of the engaged executive. Um, and these are the, the senior leaders in your organisation who genuinely believe that IT matters. They accept that they have a role and they need to step up to that role inside the organisation um, and take ownership and drive digital change inside the organisation. The time has gone um, when executives could wear their lack of IT knowledge as a badge of honour. Well, at least I hope so, anyway. Secondly, there's a, there's a need to embrace, and, and, and this was talked about earlier on around, around partnerships, that innovation in products, in services, and even in infrastructure will invariably come from outside your organisation. Successful companies are going to embrace and create and participate in ecosystems that will involve partners and suppliers and potentially even your competitors. It seems incredible in my industry where the insurance broking uh, firms are so insular. What might happen if a few of us actually got together and created new products and new services. Next up is a thing called the rise of the double deep employee or the double deep professional. And this is where companies embrace new ways of working, support and encourage and actively reward a growing population of technically gifted individuals who are um, technically gifted business individuals alongside their commercially savvy business technologists. It's that marriage of people who understand the technology and can apply it in business context and people who understand the business and are technically literate and can apply it in the, in the, in the technology sense. And finally, we have this view of the enterprise, this revitalised enterprise IT. Uh, Daryl was absolutely right. You can't run agile everywhere. Get over it. You can't. Um, but there are characteristics about, about the, what goes on inside your organisation that you should expose to the outside, and more importantly, things that go on outside your organisation that you need to welcome in and embrace inside, this outside-in and inside-out approach to technology. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that anything, any of this is easy or even that the outcomes are certain. This is just research. Um, but it seems hard to argue that engaging executives who recognise the transformative nature of technology... Growing new partnerships and uh, new ecosystems that drive innovation, motivating employees to be commercially astute business technologists and revitalising your enterprise IT seems pretty close to what this digital thing is all about. Equally, look, I'm not saying you're going to lose if your board looks like this, uh, though you probably might. That's the most... You know, failed diversity program I've ever seen. <laughs> Equally, if you look like this, I'm not saying you're going to win. Um, what I am saying, uh, just as before, is that true leadership is about galvanising your organisation around a shared vision of the future. And it would seem that digital leadership is just exactly the same. Maybe we should talk a little bit less about digital leadership 
and leadership for a digital age. And just to close, and I haven't quite got the one minute yet, but I'll, I'll assume it was there, um, I'll close with our good friend Eric. Um, his book went on to say, leading in a way that supports the status quo, standardisation, outdated practices and misconceptions related to technology not only does a disservice to our students, but it also renders our schools and profession as irrelevant. Now, if you simply switch out the words students and schools for employees and businesses, you might just conclude that Eric is every bit as valuable as those expensive Gartner and McKinsey consultants that I talked about earlier. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.